What's up everyone, my name is Sal Sincata and today we're in my studio and we are going to create natural soft light, except we're not using window light, we are gonna be using one studio strobe. What's the setup, what are we doing? I've got a Westcott FJ400 as our main light. I am using a Westcott Okta Large switch. Their switch system just allows you to use your light modifiers on different light sources. It interchanges the adapter so you can use it. You never lose your investment. As far as I'm concerned, Westcott is one of the best light modifiers on the market. Inside here, uh, you will notice I've got uh, some inner baffling, got uh, you know diffusion material out here. So it's just gonna soften that light more and more because I want soft light. Now, if we're outdoors and we're outside, all light, right, natural light is not always soft, right? So we've seen a lot of portraits where they use hard light and they look beautiful. It's very difficult to create that beauty style portrait using hard light. Not impossible, uh, but it's just not what we're doing today. So today I wanna soften this light up by using a large light source, putting that light source very close, right, to our model, to our subject. You can do this for headshots, right? They'll look and feel different versus that traditional flat lighting. And one of the things to consider when we're talking about natural light is when you're using natural light, true natural light, it is bouncing all over the place, right? So everything tends to have some light on it uh, unless it's being shaped by a certain size window, certain direction, the sun's high, the sun's low, you understand what I'm saying. So for this, I just wanna soften it. I wanna get a nice, soft directional light uh, and we are going to reflect it using a white V-flat. And the closer I put that V-flat, the less the shadows will be on the side. The further I move that V-flat away, the harder those shadows will be. So this is the beauty, I always say it, season to taste. This is the beauty of all that, because we are gonna dial something in that looks and feels somewhat more natural, somewhat more soft than a traditional hard portrait. So let's get some things out of the way. I am using a light meter. I'm using the uh, Sekonic Lightmaster Pro L478DR-U. Can we just come up with simpler names? And if I measure ambient in the room right now, no flash, I'm being lit with almost one O of light, right? Of natural light at ISO 200 and 250th of a second. And so all I'm going to do to get rid of most of this ambient is set this up for about 2.8, maybe 3.2 or 4.0, and then I'm overpowering the ambient in the room, right? So that we're using the flash uh, to illuminate this portrait. So in the spirit of that, let's get dialed in here. On camera, we are using Canon EOS R5. Uh, we are using the 50 millimeter 1.2, but I'm not gonna be shooting at 1.2. Then I'm also using FJ Westcott 400 and their X3M, their new trigger. So we're gonna have her right about here. It'll be somewhat directional, but it's off to the side. Get some reflection here. ISO 200, 200th of a second. Okay, and if we put this here, we are getting 2.8 on that light and I'll put it closer to her head, top of her head, and we're getting 2.8 flat. So if you wanna see that, 2.8 flat is what we're getting. Now, this is what's gonna be reflecting some of that light back. It's not gonna be 2.8, I don't want it to be even, we do want some shadows here. Kind of see what we're getting here. And here it's telling me it's underexposed. So all I'm gonna do here is move this a little bit closer to her to push some of that light into her. And now we're getting uh, 1.8. So there's about a stop and a half difference between that key light and what's being pushed back here. If I want more, I just keep pushing it closer and closer, all right? So hopefully that's all making sense. Now, let's start dialing in on camera because no matter, no matter what the light meter tells you, and it, it's not complicated to use, guys, but no matter what that light meter's telling you, there's always a little bit of that kind of seasoning. You know what I'm telling you? Because what you see on the back of it, your camera never really quite looks the way you want, but a little kind of pro tip here, do not trust the back of your camera screen. Anybody who's been a professional photographer for any amount of time, knows this because what you see on these bright LCD screens, it's just a lie, right? The true test to know is to look at the histogram of the image. And I don't know if you can see this here, that histogram, okay, is telling you where the highlights and shadows are, right? So you're seeing we've got more shadow than highlight detail. Uh, and that is the true test. No matter what that image is telling you here, that histogram is the absolute truth. So you've got to use a little bit of the histogram, uh, a little bit of a light meter, and really your own skill set to know what you're going to do in post production. Are you going to crush shadows? Are you going to bring down highlight? Right? Every season to taste. I can't keep saying it. Let's get going here. Let's do something cool. Come on in here, my girl. So I'm going to have you right there, turn towards me. Yeah. All right. So on camera, ISO 200, 200th of a second, f3.2. 
uh, and I'm gonna take a test shot. We're gonna see the way and make sure it looks the way we want. And then we're gonna start working. What I'm looking for is I don't want a background that's gonna go black. Like, so I do need some light hitting that background because I want kind of an evenly lit portrait, except for her face. I want her face to pop. It's a portrait. So here we go. Let's get a test shot going. Beautiful. Here we go. One, two. Okay, so I like what I'm seeing back at camera. You're gonna see this on your screen. Lighting looks good. If I look at the histogram here, no highlights are being blown. We've got some dark shadows uh, that are there, but nothing's clipping, so my shadows aren't being blocked up. If you wanna kinda see what that might look like, I spin this to F8, just to show you guys. Okay, now what you're gonna see, when you look at that histogram, you see all the shadows being crushed down here. There's no line between that right, and the bar, there's no line there. So that means all those shadows are being crushed. And that's how you kind of use that histogram. And I know that's not the point of this video, but I just, we gotta learn about this stuff. So let's go back to F32. I'm gonna check here on my LCD screen. The light is just so soft on her face. You guys gotta be loving that soft light. And we're doing it with just one strobe here. So it's just proof. You don't need 30 lights to create a beautiful portrait here. We're using just one. Uh, I do need to slide this out just a little bit. And the way you know this is working, I am talking too much, aren't I? You bright. Oh my God, start shooting. Yeah, uh, the way you know this is working is because the, the light on her face is really wrapping around and that's a combination of this V-flat pushing and the large light source. When you have a large light source, it just wraps around uh, your subject's face. But I, I am gonna shut up right now. All right, here we go, my girl. All right, everybody, that's a wrap. Hopefully you love this video. If you do, like, comment, subscribe. Give Violet a shout out. What's your uh, Instagram Violet handle? Violet D. Violet D, just Violet D? The Violet Oh, the <laughs> Violet D. I need, do I need to change mine to yeah. the, the Sal Sincata? All right, it's just, <laughs> mine's just Sal Sincata normally. Now in a future video, we will be talking about how to create the perfect um, ombre tan line. That's a future video, don't get excited about it. I know you probably are, but uh, we'll work on that for a future video. Anyway, hope you love it, hope you learned something. One light, you can create some big, beautiful beauty portraits. Get out there, do it.